Laser sights increase confidence regardless of experience level, whether you're learning the fundamentals or overcoming aging eyes. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Visit crimsontrace.com to find a dealer near you. This is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, now available on iTunes and other podcast clients and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android. Feel free to call Tom now at 1-TOM-TALK-GUN or 866-825-5486 or email Tom at GunTalk.com. Now, once again, here's Tom. Hey, welcome back to Gun Talk. Tom Gresham here. 866-TALK-GUN does get you in there. Also, of course, over on Twitter, I am at Gun Talk there. We have a lot of ways for you to be in touch with us. Of course, the incredible, I would offer the incredible Gundelio app. By the way, if you have Gundelio on an iPhone, if you've not done this yet, do this. Delete it and then reinstall it. We've made a number of upgrades, and it's a totally new build, so you have to do it that way. In fact, I've gotten some notes from people who say, wow, that's really cool. It's just doing some neat stuff now. So if you have Gundelio, delete it, put it back on. Only on iPhones. Androids are still running fine. Not a problem. Let's see. We have our Guns and Gear TV show running. Uh, this week, the Ruger American Pistol, Colt, Lightweight Commander, and uh, let's see. Oh, suppressors. We're doing lots of suppressors from Surefire. And then we're playing with the Mossberg 500. A way that you can hook up that new flex system to your existing 500. Pretty sweet. And then we're shooting robots. <laughs> yeah, really. On Gun Venture. Uh, some really interesting robots that will chase you. They work in packs. They run. I mean, they're faster than you are. Uh, when you shoot them, they scream. You got to hit them in the right place and they fall down. Amazing stuff. Great training. Lots of fun things going on. That's all on Sportsman Channel this week. Uh, check it out tomorrow night, Monday night on Sportsman Channel. All righty. Uh, we, I was recently out in the desert in Utah and we were doing the kind of things we often do with the folks at Liberty Safe, which is blowing up safes. And you'll be able to see that before too long on Guns and Gear. We'll show you some of that. That's, I mean, we're talking. We're not talking Tannerite. We're talking real explosives. We're having some fun. So uh, joining me right now is uh, Kyle Klaus from Liberty Safe. Because, Kyle, you guys have got something new going on to celebrate Independence Day, the 4th of July weekend here. Uh, we do, Tom. And it's uh, you know great to be on your show again. And uh, Liberty loves uh, when we're able to come on your show and share our product. You know, we, we had a really good time when you uh, came out and visited with us a few weeks ago. And um, you know, like you were talking about, we were blowing up safes and had a really good time. Wasn't that and, fun? Uh, <laughs> no, it was a lot of fun. And like you said, I mean, it wasn't just Tannerite. We were using real explosives and uh, um, got some great video footage. Obviously, we're excited on our end to see how that video footage uh, turned out. But uh, just had a lot of fun uh, with you out at our uh, out at our facility and out in the desert shooting, you know, shooting up some safes and blowing up some safes. So, uh, great time. But um, as you mentioned, uh, Tom, we're during uh, Independence Day weekend. Um, well, actually, uh, July first through the sixteenth. Um, we, we've got a special going on where if you purchase a Colonial Safe or above, uh, you qualify mm-hmm. to receive a free uh, gun vault. And uh, so we're really excited to, to roll this out. We rolled it out last uh, Christmas and had huge success with it. Uh, had a lot of people asking us uh, to, you know, if we'd run this special again, so we decided to roll it out during Independence Day weekend. But, yeah, you, you purchase a Colonial or above, and you'll get a free gun vault from Liberty Safe. Now, now tell, them about the, tell them what the gun vault is. Uh, well, the gun vault is a uh, it's a handgun case, and we've got different uh, several uh, different models. Um, one of our top selling uh, gun vaults is the HDX 250, and uh, it it has the most reliable uh, biometric system available uh, with a quick and secure finger uh, swipe access. Uh, so you swipe your finger, and when it's plugged into an AC unit, it has a one second open rate, meaning that you're able to get to your firearms very quickly. Uh, it's very reliable. Uh, you, uh, again, just a swipe of a finger, and uh, that mm-hmm. uh, you know that gun vault pops right open. So these, uh, the gun vault is a small safe. It's actually a locking box. Mm-hmm. You can put your handgun in, keep it away from kids or other people that shouldn't have access to it. But then you have quick access to it if you need it. Exactly. Yeah, and it, it, it's another way to secure your firearm. You can also bolt them down. We've got. Uh, Customers who put the uh, you know the gun the gun safe underneath their beds and they'll bolt them down to the floor 
uh, so that they can't, you know, they can't be taken away. They've got anti-pride door tabs uh, engineered into the guns, into the uh, um, handgun vaults, uh, so that they resist. They they have very strong uh, pry resistance, and we've done several stress tests on our gun vaults as well uh, to to make sure that when you're buying a, a Liberty gun vault, you're you're buying the absolute best, and that's you know one of our key. Uh, one of our key components at Liberty Safe is obviously our customer service. We have, uh, you know, 1.7, more than 1.7 million homeowners who have purchased a Liberty Safe. And with that, we have a 98% customer satisfaction uh, rating, wow. which is just unheard of in the safe industry. You know, Kyle, I'm just looking at the uh, the website on this uh, cool Independence Day, or actually week giveaway. And these uh, gun vaults run anywhere from 120 to like 280 bucks. So, that's a heck of a deal. Now, is that information, if you just go to the Liberty Safe website, is that where you go for that? Correct. Yeah, you just go to libertysafe.com, and they're on our homepage, our first uh, slider there at the top. It'll have our Independence Day uh, special. You click on that uh, slider at the top, and it'll take you right to the page. And uh, it lets you know what safe, uh, you know, if you purchase a Colonial, uh, you'll qualify to receive an HD 100. If you purchase a Classic, uh, or excuse me, a Lincoln Classic National Magnum or Presidential, uh, you qualify to receive an H, uh, HDX 150 or 250 of your choice. Um, and really, I, I mean, a great uh, addition to any safe is one of our gun vaults. And again, it allows you, you know, if you've got your safe in your, in your living room or in your basement uh, or in your closet, you want to make sure that you also have your handguns locked up and secure as well, but you want quick and fast access to them, uh, such as within, you know, in your vehicle, in your truck, in your car, underneath your bed. Uh-huh, yeah. and, and, and our gun vaults uh, allow someone to do that. We have people that, you know, we've got uh, a cable that also comes with a gun vault where you can wrap the cable around the uh, base of the seat of your vehicle, <clears throat> and then it secures mm-hmm. inside the gun vault so that it can't be uh, pulled or taken out of your vehicle. Uh, and, but it also allows you to still secure your gun, have easy access to it uh, in your vehicle, under your bed, or, or anywhere else in your home or office. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I love the fact that you're doing this for Independence Day. If you go to the Liberty Safe website, libertysafe.com, you can see all the info. Give it away the gun vaults when you buy one of the super duper, and I would add these really are excellent safes. And Oh, uh, Kyle, we got to tell them one more time because I tell them every time. When you figure out what size safe you need, get the next biggest one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Our biggest complaint is I wish I would have bought a bigger safe. You end up putting more in your <laughs> safe than you ever thought possible. Guns, valuables, family histories. I mean, there's just a, a ton of things that you can put in your safe. So always buy the size bigger, absolutely. We've done the same thing. I filled it up with guns, and then we started putting papers in it and putting other stuff in it, and so now I've got two of them. So there you go. Hey, Kyle, thank you. It's a great promotion, and I encourage people to go check it out. You guys are are great right there in Utah, made in America. I love it. So uh, take care. LibertySafe.com if you want to check that uh, deal out. All right, 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here, and we'll be right back with more gun talk. As we celebrate two centuries in Remington country, it's humbling to think about all the ground we've covered. Since the infancy of our nation, we've journeyed with you every step of the way, helping shape the course of American history. Remington country is bigger than a place, and for the 200 years, it's been our highest honor supporting your freedoms and your way of life. To celebrate, Remington is giving away 200 guns. For a chance to win, tell us your story at 200sweepstakes.remington.com. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. Black Hills. There's nothing like it on Earth. The kind of place where characters become legends. Wild Bill Hickok. Crazy Horse. Calamity Jane. Pick any part of the world and you'll find people go there to make it their own. But this is where people come to get made. This is the place that made the people who make the best ammo on Earth. Black Hills Ammunition.
Smith & Wesson bodyguards carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. When it comes to personal protection, nothing beats a bodyguard. Choose the lightweight, compact, and concealable Bodyguard 380 pistol or the Bodyguard 38 revolver, both with a built-in laser sight. The Smith & Wesson bodyguards carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. Yeah, I just got uh, taken a task on Twitter. Guy says, well, it's about time you figured out the whole deal with the Democrat Party. Okay, I get it. I apologize. You know, I, look, my position is really simple. And I hate that we are here. I do not like the fact that we are here where I have to say a vote for any Democrat is a vote for Nancy Pelosi and Charles Rangel and those other nut jobs up there and gives them power. But it is. Because they will take, no matter what your view is, if you get elected and you get sent up to Washington as a Democrat, they will force you to toe the party line or you will be rendered ineffective and useless and they will, in essence, destroy you. You will end up voting their way. You will. It's, it, it's the game they play. They don't know how to twist arms to the breaking point. And, and, and they'll break your, your arm, if, politically at least. So there it is. Oh, and, and to the guy that wrote me and said, look, uh, don't call him the Democratic Party. Call him the Democrat Party. I, yeah, I know. That's what Rush does. I get it. I understand the difference. But that's small potatoes. Call them progressives. I don't care. Call them the anti-rights people. You, you got to love it. When the NRA and the ACLU are on the same side on this blacklist where the government can create secret blacklist to put you on because that's that's what the democrat or democratic the democrat party wants they want to have secret government blacklist that you're on you don't even know you're on the blacklist and what happens if you're on the blacklist that you don't even know who put you on there well you can't fly on an airliner and you can't they want to make it where you can't buy a gun you have your constitutional rights stripped from you by being listed on a blacklist, a secret government list. The ACLU says that's unconstitutional. Two years ago, the New York Times said that's unconstitutional. Now the New York Times says, well, it may be unconstitutional, but we should use it to keep guns away from people. God. <laughs> Oh, uh, what a maroon. <sighs> it's it's where we are, and it's all at war. And I will be encouraging all the gun rights groups, NRA, SAF, all the rest of them, to what in whatever way they can, to whatever extent they are able, to change the tr- strategic thinking. That is not tactics, how, not how do we win this battle, but how do we destroy the other side? How do we end the entire war? How do we make gun control go away, period? Those are big things to think about. Those are things that involve changing the message changing the delivery system, changing the way the media looks at guns and gun owners, changing a lot, not just fighting a holding battle at one particular door while they're pouring over the the wall in the back of the castle, if you will, mixing metaphors all the way around. We have to do it. Otherwise, the whole fighting defensively, you lose. If you're not taking ground, if you're just giving up a little bit of ground at a time, you're giving up a little bit of ground at a time, you are losing. Let's go talk uh, to Joe. He's on line three out in San Francisco. Hey, Joe, you're on Gun Talk. Hey, uh, Tom. Um, I'm in California, and I am beyond angry with the California legislature and Moonbeam Brown did in California with their slimy bills. They made millions, and I mean literally millions, of law-abiding, tax-paying citizens felons. And I'm always trying to think of ways, how do we fight back nonviolently 
and it's those options are running out very quickly. But what I would like to see is every single county sheriff and every single police chief for every county go on record saying, we will not support these laws. And those that do not, those that intend to support the laws, I would like to see every ammo manufacturer, every firearms manufacturer saying, we will not sell ammo to you. We will not sell firearms to you. We will not repair your equipment. And if the California government gives a bad time to the ones that are on our side, then we pour money into them to support their lawsuit to fight California. We need to bring it to their knees. These measures, explain what you mean. So folks who haven't been out there don't know. When you say they just made felons out of millions of Californians, exactly what are you talking about? Okay, there, there was like 11 bills and five or six of them passed. Some of the most horrible ones are you will need an ammo permit that's going to cost, I believe, $50, and they will keep track of what you bought, when you bought, how much you bought. That's one of them. So then mm-hmm. what's going to go from there is, like, well, you bought you bought 1,000 rounds. You only need 20. You know, why are you buying so much? The other sure, thing you bought passed, too, much, too much ammo. Yeah, how much? Oh, yeah. that's way too much ammo. That's coming next. Well, you know, the, the camel's got his nose in the tent. The other one they passed mm-hmm. is a bullet button ban. So all those people that have legally owned uh, rifles with a bullet button mm-hmm. now have to, that's illegal, and they're going to make you a felon if you have them. If you have a magazine, I, I bought I bought a Beretta Model 84, a little 380, when I was mm-hmm. 21 years old. That's several years ago. It came with a 13-round magazine. We have to turn mm-hmm. those in, even if we own them pre-banned, for destruction with no compensation. Yeah, let me, let me uh, make sure people understand that. So w- what we did is they said, okay, first they said, okay, here's the deal. We're going to ban them except that they're grandfathered. If you had them before the ban, you're legal. And now retroactively they come back and say, oh, well, actually, no, we lied to you then when we said we don't want to take them away from you. Actually, we do want – because first they said we only want to stop the sale of new ones. That's always the deal we get was we don't want to take your guns away. We just want to control the sale now. But then they always come back and say, well, gee, that's not really working. So actually we do want to take them away from you. And if you don't turn them in, we'll arrest you and put you in prison. Exactly. And I, what I would like you to do with your contacts is to contact the NRA, California Rifle Pistol Association, all, all the gun groups, and push for a boycott of them selling any ammunition, firearms, or repair to any law enforcement agency that supports these laws. And the ones that support us, we need to get behind them and support them because the California legis- government will probably try to fire them or make their life miserable. Well, you remember back uh, when California banned the 50 caliber, Ronnie Barrett from Barrett uh, Firearms just said, we're not selling them to California. And some of the law enforcement agencies there said, well, look, we don't support that. He said, I don't care. Unless you get it changed, you know, you are part of this. We're not selling to you. We're not going to service your firearms. We're not. We're just not. And for that, uh, he has my eternal gratitude. On this one, it's... It would be tougher to get done simply because you have companies that are publicly traded and they are selling to, I mean, it's a big market. California's a big market and the law enforcement's a big market. And if they said, we're just not going to do this on a political basis, they actually can be sued and destroyed internally by their stockholders who say, oh, no, 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 you don't get to take this thing and make a political deal out of it. We're in business to make money. But now the privately owned company owned companies can absolutely do that, and it's not a bad idea. I'd like to see that. I'd also like to see some of the law enforcement officers, as you say, standing up and saying, "We won't enforce this. We're, we're just not going to." Here's the other thing: generally speaking, police chiefs are not elected, but often sheriffs are. It's one of the reasons that sheriffs tend, I'd say, tend to be a little bit more in touch with the public because they are elected and can be defeated at the polls. It'd be a good time for people to talk with us. But believe me, the NRA and the California Rifle and Pistol Association and all the other groups are working on this. You can expect some lawsuits out of this. I don't know what's going to happen with those. We do have measures on the ballot coming up in California in November. This is where I say we have to... This is... 
For those who haven't paid attention to this, I would encourage you to do some research on what just happened in California. This is pivotal. Now, somebody just pointed out, said, look, we are making some headway in some places. In Tennessee, uh, effective right now, a new law that says if you are a business and you put up no gun signs, you are now legally and financially responsible for harm that comes to anyone in your business, in your place of business, who gets harmed because he or she didn't have their gun, or even if they're harmed on the way to your business because they had to leave it in their car, or if they're on the way back to their car to get the gun that you told them they couldn't have in your business. So you will be financially, legally liable for damages in Tennessee. That will be challenged in court also. I don't know if it will hold up. I think it is a rocky road for that one but I absolutely love the move because, believe me, a lot of no-gun signs are going to be coming down. They really are. Uh, Let's see here. Oh, we only got a minute. Okay, I tell you what. Don't have time to get everybody in right now. Let's do this. Uh, You guys who are on hold, stay there. I will come back to you because it's not fair to box you in that way. Uh, If you'd like to join us, that's very easy. 866-TALK-GUN or just dial one Tom Talk Gun. We're going to be having uh, some other things to talk about here. I want to talk a little bit about Independence Day, 4th of July. What it meant when I was growing up, what we did, sometimes it involves, involved guns, and often it did not involve some other things. Also, just uh, a note about your safety. I see that there's a story breaking right now. Some guy just had his foot literally blown off. Yeah, I think it was in Central Park. Uh, Don't know if it was, people say, is it terrorist? Is it fireworks? Don't know. But it does make a point. Stuff happens all the time. How are you prepared? Not just with guns, emergency medical kit, with the training that you need. Can you take care of your family? Are you an overall protector of your loved ones? And if not, why not? Well, we'll have that conversation too. 866-TALK-GUN. Want your opinion to make a difference? Log on to our website and take the Gun Talk poll, www.guntalk.com. Now, once again, opinion page regular contributor for the Washington Times, here's Tom. All right, welcome back to Gun Talk, 866-TALK-GUN. Pretty much anything you want to talk about, a range report, a gun that you are looking for, that you purchased, that you like, that you uh, have had a long time. Yeah, we'll talk about that. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in. I'm sitting here looking at uh, the news reports, Fox News, CNN, etc. Lots of stories about the carnage over in the Middle East, ISIS carnage. Where people are asked, can you quote from the Koran? If not, bang, you're dead. Now imagine that same thing at a mall near you. Where people are rounded up. Convert or die is the message. Convert or die. If you're not one of us, we will kill you. Very reasonable, rational approach. You, let's be really clear here. You cannot work out a deal with someone whose goal is to kill you. Understand, they're not killing you to achieve a goal. And I think that may be the thing that people get a little bit confused about. Or they're not wanting you to do anything else. They're wanting you to die. So there's no real middle ground here. Where they say, I want you to die, and you're saying, I want to live, where there's no halfway point in here. So unless you are willing to die so that they can further their evil interpretation of their religion, then you have to do something about it. And this is the eye roll part where some people are going to roll their eyes and go, oh my gosh, Tom, you can't be serious that an individual with a gun can stop a terror attack. Well, hell yes, I am. Of course I am. It's happened. In Texas, we had 
two terrorists with rifles, and they were stopped by a police officer with a handgun. Well, a handgun's nothing. You can't stop. Well, he did because he knew what he was doing. Now, imagine that same mall where you have, pick a number, 5,000 people. But let's say that, work the odds, 100 people in the mall have guns and know how to use them. And they say, no, sir, not today, not here, not on my watch, ain't going to happen. My line in the sand, my country, you're not doing this to me and my country. No. And they start shooting back. Do they win the fight? I don't know. Do they slow down the massacre? Absolutely. And when you win time, you get support. Reinforcements show up. So, yeah, we have the right to own guns. Wasn't given to us by the Constitution. Wasn't granted to us by the Founding Fathers. We didn't get our right to own guns or self-defense by the formation of this country. We had that right before the foundation of the country. It's a human right. The right to defend yourself and your family. So, yeah, the, the whole gun rights thing is about defending yourself against attack. It's about defending yourself against a tyrannical government. Yes, it is. And I know that makes people squirm when you say that. But it is, unfortunately, these days also about protecting yourself and defending the country against terrorists. Oh, you don't want to do that. We have professionals who do that. Really? Really? Okay. So, with that line of thinking, we shouldn't have fire extinguishers because we have a fire department. Hmm. Yeah, that analogy doesn't hold up either, does it? Hmm. Let's talk to Ben. He's on line two out of Oklahoma. Hey, Ben, thanks for calling Gun Talk. What you looking for? Tom, I'm looking for the Baby Rock, the Rock Island Armory, uh, 1911 and 380. Mm-hmm. Can't find it anywhere. Have you heard anything about why? Well, have you contacted the company, Rock Island? Uh, I've sent an email with no response yet. Call them. Okay. You know, here's the deal. Emails are eminently ignorable. I I find email to be like one of the worst forms of communication. It's kind of right in there with smoke signals. Uh, and I, I, I love it. People say, well, I sent an email. I didn't get anything back. Well, duh. Call them. Pick up the phone. Call them. When you've got somebody on the other end of the line and you guys are talking to each other and you can hear their voice and, and they can hear your voice, it's really hard to be ignored and say, hey, what's going on? And if they say, well, we're having trouble getting them out, but there's some of them out there, say, okay, who has them? I would like to buy one. Where do I go for this? So call them on the phone. I don't know what the deal is. Don't know if they're having a slowdown. Don't know if they're just simply all getting bought up. But give them a call on the phone uh, next week and see what they say. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. Let's see here. Um, Joe is in Jefferson, Texas, line one. Hey, Joe. Hey, Tom. Man, I really appreciate this uh, offensive, aggressive tone I hear coming from you because for some time I thought, man, that's exactly what we need to do. It seems like most of my 50 years of life, conservatives, uh, Second Amendment people have been on defensive. And I think that yep. it, and instead we should be on the offensive instead of always trying to defend our rights. And I think that's at least one of the things that while we may be ambivalent about uh, Trump that, that is in a bit encouraging is he does seem to take on some leadership role. We have something we haven't seen since Reagan. And so I'm just yep. thrilled to see it in him. I'm thrilled to see it in you. And I hope to do the same. And, and that takes me to the point I really wanted to make when I was listening to you and Brad Thor talk about taking people to the range. And I have to concur that if we want to build our numbers and soften the resistance, uh, take somebody to the range and just begin to teach because I've never taken anybody that they didn't have that reaction of <laughs> enjoyment and surprise right. and pleasure. And provided provided you can do it safely because you can take an, a, a super enjoyable, fun day and make it very unpleasant in a matter of seconds. So you have to be, well, of course, careful. But, man, what a great thing to do. Um, 
It's a it's a great point because, you know, the number one concern that people have when you say, I want to go to the range, is they want to know, is it safe? And so you want to talk up the safety. And then when you get there, you want to say, this is what we're going to do, and it's going to be safe. And we're going to have eye protection, and we're going to have hearing protection, and we're going to, you know, do this, and we're not going to do that, and we're, and we're going to be safe. But, no, I, I think you're, you're right on the money. I think that's one of our outreach things. People say, what can I do with Make it a goal to take six people, new people, new people, shooting. Introduce six people to shooting this year. That's not so hard. One every two months. You know, the whole deal is all you got to do is ask them. They will go out with you. 866-TALK-GUN. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look. This really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShotGunTalk.com. ShotGunTalk.com. When it's all on the line, you can count on Trijicon Optics. Earning its reputation in combat and on hunts in all corners of the world, Trijicon comes through. The new AccuPower rifle scopes feature battery-powered illuminated reticles, variable power, adjustable brightness, plus they're waterproof. The years of waiting, the dollars spent, your hunt of a lifetime comes down to a single moment. Get Trijicon quality. Trijicon.com. Trijicon.com. Here at SilencerShop.com, we normally focus on making the world a quieter place. Not today. Rule 41F takes effect soon, making silencer ownership more complicated. The good news is SilencerShop.com can help. But don't delay. Purchase any in-stock silencer by July 6th, and Silencer Shop guarantees to get your Form 4 submitted and execute your transfer before deadline under current rules or give you $100. The Powered by Silencer Shop guarantee. Details and restrictions at SilencerShop.com. All right, we're back with you. Let's go straight to the phones. Line three, Bobby, Muskogee, Oklahoma. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Tom. This is a great honor for an old recon Marine, buddy. I love you. <laughs> I appreciate uh, I'll be real brief. We, we're, God willing, we're just about to have a great new friend in the Oklahoma house. His name yeah. is Avery Fricks, F-R-I-X. And he just won the Republican primary. He's got an AQ rating from the NRA. And, boy, he's a great Second Amendment warrior. So I just wanted to let you know who he is. And you're going to hear more about him, I'm sure. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate all your work. I mean, that's that's what we have to do is we have to simply replace the bad ones with the good ones over and over again to the point where anybody running says, Man, I can't get on the bad side of the of the gun owners. No, and, and look, thanks for the call, Bobby. Note I did not say I can't get on the bad side of the NRA because those are two different things. They're like the, the Venn diagrams with the two circles that overlap. And yes, there's the NRA, and then there's the American gun owner. They are not the same. What we need to let them know is that, yes, you don't want to get on the bad side of the NRA, but also you don't want to get on the bad side of the American gun owner which is a hundred million of us. 
Now, if you wanted to say, okay, how do we make the NRA better? How do we make them more powerful? How do we make them more effective? Well, that part's, that's easy. That's the easiest thing ever. If every NRA member would turn around and simply pull 25 bucks out and buy a membership for a friend, because those deals are available everywhere. They're 35 bucks, but you get it for 25. 25 bucks. Every NRA member turns around and buys a membership for a friend. It goes from 5 million to 10 member, 10 million. Boom. It's over. The battle is over. Really? No, I'm not kidding you. I'm not being facetious or hyper, you know, hyperbolic or, or anything. We win. Hmm. And then what we need to do is get the NRA to make some shifts in its approach, which is we must... Our goal must be simply this, and I know this is a change, and for those of you who say, gee, I told you so, you're late coming to it, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it, but we can only get there when we get there. We simply have to have a goal of destroying gun control. Every vestige of it, every part of it, everything that restricts lawful gun ownership, everything that causes a delay, a background check, a registration of a, of a silencer, machine gun, or anything else, everything, get rid of all of it. That way, if the goal is to simply get rid of all gun control, if we only get 10%, we have advanced 10%. We've taken ground, as opposed to being defensive and saying, We're, we can't let them pass gun control laws. And if they get 10%, we've lost ground. Wrong way. You cannot win. You cannot advance by playing defense. You got to stick it to them. And to do that, you have to be a warrior. You have to be a fighter. You have to get up every day, every single day, wake up in the morning. And while you're having your Cheerios and your cup of coffee, you say, what am I going to do for the Second Amendment today? I'm going to make, oh, three phone calls. I'm going to spend 10 minutes and I'm going to make three phone calls. I'm going to call my senator's offices. I'm going to call my representative's office. Yes, I called them last week. I'm going to call them every week. It's only 52 weeks in a year. I'm going to call them every week. And I I want them to know me by the sound of my voice when I call. Now, if you do it by yourself, it's not that big a deal. But if you get six of your buddies to do it, believe me, they start to pay attention. Oh, 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 note. I didn't say email. Forget the email. Email is so eminently ignorable. It's unbelievable how ineffective email is. Call them. Talk to somebody. And, oh yeah, remember, they also have, they have offices in Washington, but they also have offices back in the state. Call both. What else am I going to do for the Second Amendment? Huh. I'm going to figure out who's running for state office, and I and they always want support. I'm going to call them and say, hey, here's the thing. You have to be careful how you ask it. What's your stance on the Second Amendment? What's your stance on gun rights? If they start out with, well, I support the right to own guns, or I support the Second Amendment, but, or I support hunter's rights, that's always a giveaway. If they start off with, well, I'm a hunter, Ah, uh, sorry, didn't ask you that. And that's usually how they start off by saying, yeah, I'm for actually a lot of gun control laws, and I really don't much like gun ownership, but I'm a hunter. I, I hunted a few times. I grew up hunting. But you guys with your black rifles, I won't throw you dudes under the bus, man, because that's basically that's what my party wants me to do. I will ride you out of town on a rail. I will show up. And here's the thing, what you have to say to yourself, and maybe to them, I will show up at every single campaign event you hold, and I will call you to task on it. And then, don't just promise that you got to do it. And you get your own little club going, your group, or you get your gun club that does that, you get a larger group that does that. We have to go on the offensive. We have to destroy gun control everywhere we find it.
What? What would you do with a mayor who destroyed $30,000 worth of public property? What would you do with a mayor who burned up $30,000 in public funds? Well, in Seattle, ah, they're going to applaud him, I guess. In Seattle, they're going to destroy $30,000 worth of used police guns instead of making those guns available for sale. And of course, if they make them available for sale, they have to go through a firearms dealer, and so the FBI has to okay everybody who gets a gun, right? And we know this to be true, right? So what could they do with that? They could, oh, they could make them available to low-income families or single mothers who need to defend their families. But, oh, no, 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 no. The city council voted to melt the guns to prevent them from falling into the wrong hands. It's a... Um, It's an image thing. It's a publicity stunt, except that these things could be sold and the city gets the money and it helps the budget, or they could be provided to people who can't get their own guns to protect themselves and their families. But no, 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 no. The mayor, Ed Murray, says, um, so guns and gun violence is a huge problem in every city in America, and mayors around the country are struggling with what I'm struggling with. How do we reduce the number of guns when Congress won't act? Actually, no, that's not really what they're struggling with. It's how do we reduce violence in your cities that have these model gun control laws. Gun control kills people. Gun control laws kill people. Gun control laws prevent good people from having guns and don't stop bad guys from having guns. It really is that simple. It really is. Matt's on line two out of Oklahoma. Hey, Matt, you think about switching guns? Yes, sir. I'm thinking about switching to a 9mm CP3. The SIG P320. Okay, we, I tell you what, we, I think we've got a bad connection. What, what Matt's doing is he's got a, an XDS, Springfield XDS in 45, and he's thinking about switching to the SIG P320 for concealed carry. Well, there are two, at least two things involved here. One is the XDS is a single stack in 45. Great gun. Fabulous carry gun. I love the way they shoot. I carry an XDS occasionally. Depends on the situation. The SIG P320 is the epitome of the most modern versions of America's semi-automatic pistols. Now, if you're talking about, is the 9 better, is the 45 better? That's just something we have to sit down and drink about, because that's all we're going to get accomplished. We're never going to come to an agreement or a conclusion on this one. Uh, We start bar fights with the whole 9 versus 45 deal, or we could sell a million copies of guns and ammo by putting that on the cover. Um, I don't know. It's your your position, your choice, personal preference. Some people say I want bigger bullets. Some people say I want more bullets. I I don't know. I will tell you that the SIG P320 is a wonderful pistol. It really shoots nicely. And if you haven't had a chance to check that out, you really need to. At the same time, and and again, it's double stacked, so it's going to be a little bigger. If you like the slim, less than an inch thick, by the way, XDS, um... People vary on that. Actually, it's funny because Ryan has a 45 XDS. I have a 9mm XDS that we carry various times. Even we can't agree, son and, and father. So go figure, uh, just the way it is. No matter what you do, once again, it's one of those deals that sometimes we, we actually worry about the wrong things. Get which one you like, it doesn't matter, and then go ahead and buy a 1,000 rounds of ammo for it, a 1,000 rounds of ammo and make it your goal to shoot that 1,000 rounds of ammo in at least less than three months. Go take another lesson. I don't care how many you've had. Take another lesson. Go out and shoot. Shoot 1,000 rounds up in less than three months. That by itself will get you mostly where you need to be. And if you can get some real world force-on-force training, you're much, much better. 866-TALK-GUN to get you in here. This is Gun Talk. Gun Talk.